Tonight is November the 23rd, 2021, and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk tonight only about an AM transmitter and how I have learned, after several different types of uh, circuits that I've experimented with, what I find to be uh, the best, in my opinion. I mean, if you're an AMer, you've got your own uh, ideas and you've got your own uh, stuff set up and if it works for you then I'm not trying to change it or tell you that you're wrong I'm not trying to go there but I have uh, experimented with several different types of uh, negative limiters I don't like to call them clippers because we're not actually clipping it but we're limiting the negative modulation so that it never exceeds 100% negative if you're an AM or you know exactly what I'm talking about <clears throat> You can put more than 100% positive modulation on an AM carrier, but if you uh, try to modulate it more than 100% negative, you cut the carrier off. Because what you're doing is you're cutting the voltage off from the power supply to the final amplifier. Now in my case right here, the, uh, the power supply is this guy right here. This power supply right here it's only to like 1250 volts and it runs up uh, the output of the power supply runs up and it goes through the secondary winding of this modulator that's why you what you do is you modulate the high voltage you superimpose your voice or your music whatever it is in an AM transmitter on the high voltage that goes up to this amplifier this is the final amplifier which goes out to the antenna now the frequency that this, this amplifier is running at is determined by this little guy up here, which is the exciter. This determines the frequency. Let's pick this up so you can see a little bit better. This is where you set the frequency you're transmitting on. Um, sorry, I gotta do this. And it feeds into here and determines the frequency output. I think uh, certainly all you guys that run AM know this, but if you're new to AM, you may not realize uh, the, all, the, all of the steps. Okay, now, <clears throat> for example, say you got, just for make numbers easy to talk about, say you got 2,000 volts uh, going from your power supply down here up through your modulator to your amplifier that feeds the antenna. Let's suppose it's 2,000 volts. Well, to modulate it 100 percent, you're going to have to add a peak voltage of 2,000 volts of audio to that 2,000 volts DC. So now we got 4,000 volts peak. But that 2,000 volts of audio is going to also swing negative 2,000 volts and then the negative 2,000 volts is going to again algebraically add into the plus 2,000 volts coming from the power supply down here and the sum of that's going to be zero and when the voltage on this amplifier right here the class C amplifier goes to zero then it quits transmitting it just quits during that part of the audio cycle and that's a bad thing to happen you don't want that to happen because that makes you what's called splatter it, it creates a lot of spurious uh, sidebands near the transmitted frequency, not harmonics, not integer multiples of the transmitter frequency, but all kinds of uh, audio uh, noise splatter and uh, uh, interference around the, uh, the frequency that you're transmitting at. Okay, so our goal is to never over modulate in a negative direction. Okay, well, I happen to have gotten in the neatest little catch me out toy here. I'm telling you, I love it. Okay, well, let me let me take this off. I got to show you a few things. Okay, there are a lot of ways to do this. Um, it could be done back at the, the speech amplifier level, back here. This is the speech amplifier. The, the microphone, microphone plugs in right there. And the output of this little amplifier comes around. And it goes into the modulator right there. And that's where the audio feeds in and drives this thing, which is a pair of push-pull 4-125s. Okay, 
you can uh, you can do a lot back there, but that's the complicated way of doing it. Okay, let me just show you quickly some uh, some circuits that I have tried that I know other people use. I'm going to put links in the video to these, at least three links. Um, I've tried this one. I don't particularly like it. I wasn't satisfied with it. Okay, this is one version. There's another version where all you do is you actually eliminate these two diodes right here. You just completely eliminate them and you use, you use just this one diode and this resistor and this resistor can be variable. You, you could hook a wire from you know one side of it to the center and vary it up and down. And Generally people say to set this uh, resistor to pretty much what the uh, impedance of the uh, Class C amplifier you're driving is. So this is a three diode one. There's another three diode one, and the one that I've built, and I'm going to show you how well it works. Uh, it's right here. It's this one right here. It's a little bit different configuration, and it's a little bit more complicated than it appears. It, see, here's the modulation transformer again, it's the same as the other one. This goes out to the, in my case, to 4-125 plates. And this goes to the high voltage, and then here's the wire that's going up in the other one. They drew it straight up. It's going up to the Class C amplifier. But in this case, this is the same resistor. Right here, you put in just a little bit of voltage. It's variable, but it only needs to be, in my case, about 50 volts or so. And what this keep alive voltage is, is this voltage right here never goes away because it's from a fixed power supply. So what that does is that prevents this voltage up here, no matter what the audio level is back here in the negative direction, no matter how, how much you over-modulate it, this keep alive voltage makes sure that the voltage going up to the Class C amplifier it never goes to zero. That's why they call it the keep alive power supply. It keeps the, the amplifier the Class C plate modulated amplifier up here alive keeps the plate always conducting just by providing just even as little as 50 volts to it out of a couple of thousand it doesn't take that much okay now with that said here is my power supply that I'm using right here it's this uh, Lambda power supply uh oh let's zoom out a little bit I'm not going to turn it on yet because I want to show you how I can over modulate. It's all into a dummy load, of course. <clears throat> and I'll show you how we measure it. There is the circuit I built right there. That's, that's it. That's that one I'm showing you. The very one. It's got some extra components on that, too, because I used it also for the uh, measurement using a uh, trapezoid pattern. We're not using that now. Uh, here it is from the other direction. That big resistor right there uh, is the power, is what's in that schematic I'm just showing you, and then the three diodes are over here. Okay, but here's a little program made by a Radio Engineering Associates that's just about as cool as can be. Okay, now I need to put this back on the camera. Well, maybe I don't have to. Okay, we do not have any audio limiting or clipping at this time, so let's turn it on, and uh, we're not measuring anything. <laughs> okay, well, we're transmitting. We're doing everything right. You can actually see my audio right there, but I guess maybe I've got to stop it and, and, and start it again. I bet that's what i got to do because it hasn't been started recently. But it'll work. Uh, opening. Oh, darn. Why did it do that? Error opening. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. For crying out loud. Well, let me see what I'm doing wrong. I'm, I'm doing something wrong because this thing works great. Okay. Basically, all I had to do was turn it off and turn it back on. And see, you can hear my voice across the room here. Watch it modulating. The one on the right is the percent modulation positive, it says right there, positive peaks and negative peaks on the left. Okay, let me get the microphone in my hand and I'll show you how it works. 
really, really impressed with this little device. I'm going to try to overmodulate it, and I am. As you can see, the uh, positive peaks right there are going well over 100%, which is okay. They're going up to about 120%. On the left side, it's going all the way to 100%. And I've got the volume turned down, to the gain of the microphone turned down to where it's not too bad. But you can see my red light coming on right there. See that big red light? That means I'm, that means I'm over modulating it. We got the bar graph down here. And I've got it set to where it says negative peaks. Say 100%, that's where the light comes on. See a little red light coming on? <clears throat> Especially if I if I get really excited and I talk too loud. We don't ever want that to happen. We don't care if this one comes on over 100%, but we never want this one to come on over 100%. And here's our modulation coming out on a peak reading watt meter. Uh, the average is about uh, 270 or 80 watts. It's bumping up to about 1100 watts, 1175 whatever, which is correct. Four times the, uh, the carrier power be about 1200 watts PEP from a 300 watts. So that means that actually, according to the rules today, you can't run more than a 350 watts of carrier that's a 100% that's a plate modulated. Okay, you, you can see how I, I can overdrive this thing and, and, and that would be splattering right now. Every time that red light right there comes on. <clears throat> Hello, one, two, three, four. Well, I do have the gain turned down, so it's not too bad, but watch this. Okay. I'm going to turn this power supply on. Everything's on here. Got to make sure it doesn't get me. Of course, this thing is vacuum tube, so it's got to warm up just for a second. It's got a couple of, uh, got a VR tube there on the left, a couple of six F6s, I believe it's. Uh, right there is the voltage regulators and then once we get that done and we start modulating look at the negative modulation see it cannot reach 100% because of the, the way I've got the voltage set on the power supply it never reaches 100% that light right there the big red light never comes on it never goes to 100%. There's no matter how loud I talk. See, I can talk this thing all the way up to 140% positive modulation, but I'll never reach 100% negative modulation here. There is just kind of an RF pattern in my modulation. The darn thing, the, the circuit works, and this little monitor is just absolutely amazing. Uh, it has a it has a pickup right here that just uh, connects into the uh, RF line with a T connector, a little T connector right there, and that's a pickup, and it feeds down into uh, this little unit laying right there, and then that goes into a USB port uh, plugged in right there. And that's the whole thing you download the software from them. I'm very pleased with this. I'm also uh, pleased with my uh, my new little watt meter here. It's more of a toy than anything else, but there's just something about that visual, uh, that visual uh, LED stuff that I really like. Okay, well, I'm, all I'm going to do here, let me turn this thing off a minute, see, we're running uh, 300 milliamps. I'm, I'm not going to get down there too much to get on the ground, and there's the modulators, you can see them. They're a nice, healthy orange color, and down inside the... Uh, the amplifier itself is a pair of push-pull 812s. So if you are an AMer, you might like this. I'll quit talking into the microphone. Let's zoom this thing out. Let's turn it off. And that's really all I got to say for it. Uh, like I say, there's three links that are just really, really good reading about um, about these negative peak clippers or limiters or whatever you want to call them. Oh, by the way, I do have one more toy here. Uh, this was given to me last Tuesday. So I've had it exactly a week. Got it running. It just works marvelous. Puts out a full legal limit. It's a Collins 30 S1. I'm driving it with this little KWM2A here. People tell me it sounds marvelous. Uh, I'll have to show you right quick down inside it. 
And of course you realize that when I show you on the innards here, let's turn it on. I'm, uh, I put uh, I put genuine. It's all powered off. I put genuine 866 rectifiers back in it. It had some 3B28s in it, but they were bad. I had to pull this uh, rack out right here and change all of the uh, electrolytic capacitors in it. And um, it also came with uh, the plate choke missing for some reason. I guess somebody needed it uh, at one time for a parts for a parts unit for something else. But there's the blower. It's kind of dark in there, I know. Sorry. Let me light it up a little bit. If you're like me, you like to see the innards of amplifiers. There we go. Now we lit up. There's the tuning over there and the plate tank coil down there, etc. I had to add that plate to choke back there. I think it's a National R175A is what I added in there. I also got some B&W 800s that I, I could have put in there. Same difference. And there's the uh, antenna changeover relay. There's the 4CX1000. I do have this uh, little circuit right here disabled because uh, it, it is not closed and I haven't taken the time to uh, fix it. That's a new 4CX1000. It was given to me new back around 1983. Several of them. Yeah, this thing is uh, it's, it's a beauty. I love it. Like I say, it does full legal limit and uh, sounds great. Something I always wanted. So, uh, my many thanks to my friend that gave me this. Just can't get enough of it, can we? Thanks for watching. Stay safe, my friends.